Okay, so today we're going to talk about the English administration of the colonies. Again, your book goes into a lot more detail. This is a short video. We already mentioned that the mercantile system was in effect, right? And this, this really actually made the average American better off economically. Uh, during the, the English Civil War, a lot of the colonial trade had shifted to the Dutch. But after the war was over, the English Civil War, uh, we're going to see England pass a series of navigation acts. And the purpose of the navigation acts were an attempt to uh, gain control over the colonial trade, uh, making sure that the American colonies weren't trading with anybody else and all that stuff went through England. There's going to be a series of these acts over the next 30 years that, um, that while in their intent, they said they wanted to gain control. Enforcing the acts was very difficult because you could pass a law in England. That's one thing, but enforcing it 3,000 um, uh, miles away is completely different. Uh, so the colonials will uh, often violate the acts, break them, ignore them, uh, bribe people off. Well, in 1685, Charles II dies and James II takes over. He's the first Catholic sovereign since Queen Mary. And he wants to regain control of the colonies. So he approves a proposal to create what they call the Dominion of New England. It's gonna place under its jurisdiction all the colonies down to New Jersey. Now, eventually James would have done this to the Southern colonies as well. The idea is that it's really creating a super colony. The government of the Dominion would be named by royal authority. A governor or council would be supported by the King without any colonial assembly. So that means they're getting rid of colonial assemblies, something that they've been used to since 1619. And this is gonna be a, a, a government appointed only by the king. And the first governor of the Dominion of New England is gonna be a guy by the name of Sir Edmund Andros. Now, Andros, let's talk about him just briefly. Uh, he's a good soldier. Now, he's good at giving and taking orders. He's honest, he's efficient, he's totally loyal, but he's totally tactless too. And he has no sense of what he's gonna to do to offend people. And he's gonna cause a lot of resentment in the colonies. Um, he's gonna curb the power of town meetings and you can't meet because he's afraid they're gonna be talking bad about him. Um, he challenged land titles, uh, which makes people very upset. They say, hey, I have had this title of this land for a long time, it's mine. Uh, it should not be taken away from me. He levies taxes without consent. He arrests and finds protesters. Um, he took over a Puritan church for Anglican worship. And, and this is where you get to the tactless point, right? You, you could have gone to the colonies and said, look, we need some taxes because we need to provide for the common defense. Um, if you needed a, an Anglican worship place, you could have gone to the colonies and go, look, I need a place where I can worship. But he doesn't do that. One thing is, though, that Edmund Andros doesn't last very long because of the Glorious Revolution. Um, the English are also tired of James II. They don't like his Catholic ways. Uh, so the parliament invites James's Protestant daughter, Mary, and her husband, the Dutch leader, William of Orange, to jointly rule. And by the way, uh, the House of Orange still, rule, uh, still is the monarchy in the Netherlands. So William and Mary say, sure, we'll, we'll do this, right? I'll, we'll come over and get rid of your fa my, my father. So James II flees to France. And when this news hits America, they arrest Andros and his men, and all the colonies went back to their normal status. Uh, and this will be known as the Glorious Revolution. Uh, and it will cause John Locke, who we introduced earlier, to write his two treatises on government. One was uh, 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 refuting the divine right of kings, saying, nope. And the other one was about government by consent and the idea of natural rights. So when William and Mary come over, they're, they're coming over only uh, with limited power. Parliament wants them to know that they're in charge from now on. You can be king and queen, but Parliament will control the purse. Uh, but John Locke's two treatise on, on government from the Glorious Revolution is going to have a huge impact uh, on the Americans in less than 100 years. The idea of government by consent and natural rights. Like I said, that's a short uh, little video. What we will do next time is we will cover the, uh, the colonial wars and then we'll lead up to the American Revolution.